In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add custom fields to your Contact Form 7 forms so that when your visitors answer certain questions in certain ways, other questions appear, which is really useful stuff, and we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you're new here, hit subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, let's head to the screen capture and start adding these conditional fields to Contact Form 7. I'll see you there. The first thing we have to do to get conditional functionality to our Contact Form 7 forms is install a plugin called Contact Form 7 Conditional Fields. To do that, we're gonna head over to Plugins and then Add New and look up Contact Form 7 Conditional and this first plugin right up here in the top left is the one that we use for that. Click on install now, then click on activate. And now we don't have to set any settings. We can head into our form editor by going to the contact menu item, clicking on edit for a form we wanna work on. I'm just gonna work on this basic form here. Now we have a conditional fields tab that's been added up here. In here is where we define the rules for our conditions, but first we have to make fields. And in our form editor, we also have a conditional fields group that's been added and the groups are what are gonna appear or disappear based on our conditions. So I'm just gonna make a really simple example. Let's have a drop down menu that is required and people will choose if they are a child, a teenager, an adult, or a senior. You can have on here anything you want. You also don't have to have drop downs for this to work. It can be any field where information is entered and then other fields will appear. This is just an example. You can do this all kinds of ways. So we have that drop down. I want to have it so when they select teenager, they're asked more questions, as well as when they select senior. When they select child and adult, nothing more is going to be asked of them. The very next thing after the drop down, I'm going to click on conditional field groups. I'm going to put in here teen. Click on insert tag put some space inside of that group. And in here, I'm gonna ask a question, text-based question about smartphones. It's gonna make the name smartphone. I'm just gonna copy these labels from up here so we have the same appearance. Okay, I'm gonna, the question's gonna be, do you have a smartphone? And depending how they answer that, we're gonna show another field. I'm gonna click on conditional field groups again and call this phone type. Insert tag, enter some more spaces. This is called a nested element. So we can have groups within groups, which is pretty cool. And we have a warning down here that I just noticed multiple form controls are in a single label element because I'm missing this greater than symbol. That should, the error should go away pretty soon. But inside this nested group, I'm going to add another text field. I'm going to call the, for the name, smartphone type. Then I'm going to copy and paste these again. The question will be what type of smartphone? And you don't want to make these required because if these fields don't appear, the form will still think they're required, but people can't actually enter any information. So they can't actually submit your form ever unless they make all the fields appear. So all the fields with conditional formatting that may or may not appear, you can't make them required. Next, the seniors group. Add conditional fields, I'm gonna call it seniors. Click on insert tag. In here, I'm gonna ask two questions. Age and insurance. I'm gonna copy these labels again. How old are you? Above the age question. Do you have insurance? 
And about the drop down up here, I'm going to add a label that says or asks which group do you belong to? Wow, two. So as you can see, you can get pretty complex with these. The challenge is keeping it all straight. So for the nested elements, I recommend you space them in a little bit so you know which one is a child of which one. Otherwise, if you have lots of conditional things going on, it can be hard to read. So now we have our question that our conditional is going to be based on. We have a group for teenagers and a nested group within that, depending on what their answer will be. And then we have the seniors group. Now that that's set up, I'm going to click on save. Then I'm going to go to conditional fields and click on add new conditional rule. And we fill in the blanks essentially. If select field, if the drop down, which I didn't label properly, hang on. Let's call this drop down. Save that. It'd be easier to work with if we know what we're actually selecting. Conditional fields again, if drop down equals teenager. So we have to type in the exact value that the drop down will produce, which is teenager. Then show the group teen. Add a new rule. If the smartphone field equals yes, then show phone type. If they first chose teenager from the drop down, we'd show them the question, do you have a smartphone? Which is a smartphone question. If their answer is yes, we show them the question that asks, what type of smartphone do you have? If their question is no, we show them nothing and they can carry on in the form. So that's how that nested element works. We add a new conditional field for the seniors. So from drop down, if the drop down equals senior as the group they choose, then show the seniors group. We're going to click on save. Before we create a page to test this on, we have to deal with the email tab. So if we don't enter our new fields into our mail tab, it won't work. So let's just go ahead and delete what's in there. Go back to our form tab. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Paste the whole thing into mail. I'm going to do a bit of editing. So the first question is, what's your first name? Second question is email. Third question, which group do you belong to? I'm going to type in here teen group because the email is not conditional. So you should put in all the questions that you have into every email so they have all the data. You're not going to have different types of email sent. So all the info has got to be in one. So we've got the teen group and the seniors group. Wow. There we go, the seniors group. So I'm just reducing this all down to the questions that I ask. Then we're going to add in the actual tags to deliver the data into the email. Lastly, we have your message. We can delete the send message button. Don't need that. Okay, so now we have basics of what the questions are. So for your first name, we're going to enter in here. It's going to copy, actually. Copy that short code. Put that in there. Your email. Copy this short code. Which group do you belong to? Copy the drop down. Do you have a smartphone? Yes, I do. The teen group is not needed because that's the actual group. What we want is smartphone. And then for the phone type, I'm going to put that down in the what type of smartphone. For the seniors, again, seniors is not needed because that's the overall group. We want the age. And we want whether or not they have insurance. And then at the very end, we want the actual message, which is, which is this field here. 
There we go. Now the email will have all the information that they fill into the form. So let's go to save and let's copy the short code. Create a new page. I'm going to call it CF7 conditional form. I'm going to paste the short code into the editor down here. Make sure I'm on the text tab and paste it in. Click on publish. Head out to that page to see how our form looks. And here's our basic form. We enter our name, we enter our email, then we choose which group we belong to. If it's child, nothing appears. If it's adult, nothing appears. If we choose senior, we have these two questions appear. Are we gonna enter in how old are we? 67 and no, I don't have insurance. Then they can enter their message here, click on send message, and then email will be delivered to you. If they're a teenager, they select like teenager. And then in here, do you have a smartphone? If they type in no, then they carry on, enter their message, click on send message. If they have yes in here for a smartphone, the second field pops up. What type of smartphone? It's a Samsung, for example. Then they enter their message, then they click on send, and that sends the email to you. If you're creating a simple form like this with just a couple options, it's pretty straightforward. But if you're creating a more complex form, you should really map it out on a piece of paper exactly how you want questions to appear and what answers should cause which questions to appear. But once you have that up mapped out on paper, it's really easy to create that in the form editor like I just did. That's how easy it is to add custom fields to your contact form 7 forms. It's really powerful. If you have any questions or problems, please leave them down below this video. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.